Hi everyone! Thank you for coming to watch this tutorial on the flip cut, the flip clutch wallet. This is a pattern that I purchased from Spencer Og on Etsy, and it was a lot of fun to make it. I really enjoyed it, and if you see here, these are the pattern pieces. They are really easy to match up to what you're needing to sew because they are all lettered and labeled, very easy to read. So I am going to jump into showing you how to make the flip clutch wallet. And then at the end, I will share what I've made with you. And I will also give you my thoughts on the pattern, somewhat of a review to let you know things I noticed, things I'd like to point out. Um, so let's get started. So today we're looking at the Spencer Og sewing pattern, the flip cut, the flip clutch wallet. And the pattern will have all of the requirements that you need on it. But I'm going to go through and show you the different components here. I'm not going to give out any dimensions, like I said, because this is a pattern that you would purchase. I will put the link to purchase this pattern in the description. So your main body is will look like this. And I like to keep the pattern pieces together as I work on it. It just helps me keep track of everything. As you can see, you would cut this on the fold. And the pattern pieces all show you what all you need to cut out of everything else and whether it's like the lining or the outer fabric. So I did put some woven interfacing on the back. Then you have the phone pocket. This is B. You have the pocket return, which is C. And I am doing two different lining colors, as you will see as we go along. And then we have the flap, which I cut two out of. And again, there is woven interfacing on the back of all of my cotton pieces. Here is E, the credit card lining, and you will see that you will have to tape, tape two pieces together for that. Here is mine with the woven interfacing. And then I am gonna use some Decoville Firm Stabilizer for the flap, and that is pattern F. And then here are the card pockets. This is G1, you will tape it together, and you are cutting two of these on a fold. So one and two. And I do want to let you know that you will see along some of the pattern pieces, there are notches to cut out. Um, that will make everything a lot easier if you do choose to do that. So my two pieces for that and woven interfacing is on the back of both. And then lastly, we have two um, coin pockets and these have um, interfacing on the back of those as well. So those are all the pieces that are cut out. And then we have You'll need two magnetic snaps. You'll need a um, bit of zipper. And then if you want to make that handle on the bag, you will need, um, you will need a piece of fabric for that as well. So that is all the components of the bag. So now we'll jump into um, sewing the bag together. Okay, the first thing we're going to be doing is working on our flap, which is D. So there, remember there's two pieces. There's gonna be your outer, and if you chose to do a lining, your lining may be a contrasting color. I chose to do both sides of my flap the same fabric. So your main fabric is going to have the stabilizer if you're choosing to use it. So we're gonna iron that on, and as you can see, I have it flush with the top, leaving our um, our seam allowance around it. So I'm gonna iron that in place and then we're going to be putting the male part of our um, of our magnetic clasp on the lining piece. So I'm gonna keep ironing that on. Um, for me, the decoville can take a, quite a bit of time to attach with my iron. So we're gonna work on, the flap. What I do is like I like to put a pin through and then I will mark where the pin comes through the pattern. So there 
will be the middle mark for our magnetic clasp. And then I line up the washer with that and I mark where the prongs will go through. Then I just use a seam ripper to cut along the prongs. And you don't want to go too far through. You just wanna cut just enough to get your prongs through. And then your, your magnetic snap is going to be on the outside of that and you're gonna push it through where you cut your pieces. If you want, you could put a little bit of um, fray check or something like that there just to keep it nice and stable. And then I'm going to attach a little bit of Decoville there just to stabilize it as well. So I need to mark where the prongs are going to go. And I will iron this in place after. So put that through. Put your little washer on and attach that by pushing your prongs down. It sometimes helps if you're on a more, I'm on some wool for pressing. So I'm gonna move it over a little bit. A little a firmer surface helps a lot. So I'm gonna iron that in place and make sure to get that ironed down. And then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I have the Decoville attached to the front of the flap and I have the clasp in place, the magnetic clasp. So I'm going to sew following the seam allowance around the sides and the curved bottom portion and back up. The seam allowances are all given in the pattern instructions. So I'm just gonna place some clips around here to hold that in place as I sew around. Okay, after sewing around the sides and the bottom, you will want to trim away some of the excess seam allowance. And if you don't have pinking shears, you will want to like Add some snips along the curves to help it lay flat. Um, if you have the pinking shears, just use those along the corners. It'll help with those um, to allow them to lay a little more flat. But um, just adding some snips into the corners, staying away from the threads will also help. So I'm just going to trim that off and then we're going to flip it around and if you would like um, to add a little more detail, we could top stitch around, um, around the edge, the sides and the bottom that we had just sewed about um, an eighth of an inch. Do a little top stitch around it just to add some detail. I'm going to do that because I think it looks really nice, but it is not something you have to do. It's a little hard to flip this because of the stabilizer I used. I did use the heavy Decoville. There we go. So that is the outside of the flat. The flap, I'm going to press it a little just to make sure it lays nice and flat. And I am going to do the eighth of an inch top stitch around after I get it nice and pressed out and even. Okay, make sure I have the seam nice and even too. Okay, so I'm gonna top stitch an eighth of an inch around here. Okay, so it may be hard to see, but I did do a top stitch around the outside of the flap. So the flap, we are now going to attach centered onto our main body piece, which is piece A. So I'm gonna center it there. And then we're going to um, just kind of base that in place there within the seam allowance. So I'll probably just do an eighth 
you know, a scant fourth or an eighth of an inch and attach the flap here. So at this point, I do want to show too that the pattern is really great about showing um, different flap ideas. So another one I'm working on out of cork and vinyl, I did attach a little bit of an accent piece and put some rivets on there. Um, and there's also different pattern cutouts for um, different shapes of flaps too. So I thought that was really amazing that that was included in with the pattern. So I'm gonna base that in place across here. And then we are going to attach piece C onto here um, to get that um, phone pocket in place. So this is that pocket piece. And after we baste across here, we're going to lay this right side down and we're going to stitch across using our seam allowance. As you can see we stitched that pocket panel in place so what we're going to do now is fold it over onto the main body onto the wrong side of the main body so wrong sides are together and we're going to stitch two inches down the side from the top where the flap is down the side of the pocket panel so I'm going to mark where the two inches are And this is just to hold the pocket panel in place. So we're not using the main seam allowances, we're just tacking it in place along there. And after we do that, we're gonna flip the panel over and we're gonna top stitch along, along here, along the main body. Okay, so now you can see that the pocket, um, the start of the foam pocket is stitched in place. There's the top stitching across there. And what we're gonna do now is line up, see those handy notches? You want them to be lined up with the top of the pocket panel. And we're going to put some clips there to hold it in place. And I'll show you from the other side as well what that looks like. So if you can see, you'll see that curved edge pokes out along the top of the panel there we're going to be stitching this in place. So the first portion we're gonna be stitching in this place is the bottom here. We're gonna be holding the main body out of the way and stitching along the bottom here. And then we are going to be stitching along the sides just up to the notches. So we're not gonna stitch past the, the notches at all. So. Okay, so now that we have this main part sewed, we have our phone pocket um, in place. You can see how that's gonna work now. So I sewed from the notches right through the main body piece, just kind of to hold that in place. And through the bottom of the phone pocket, but did not attach it to the main body. So I held the main body back when I sewed that. So right now we're able to just set this to the side and we are going to prep our credit card pockets. This is the G pieces that we taped together. So in the instructions you can read and see where all the folding takes place. It's really important to follow that. And the main folds that are going to be top stitched are the line E, the line C and the line A. You're not going to top stitch around along the dotted lines and that is all indicated in the um, in the pattern instructions. So what we're going to do is you'll see that one side of this is longer than the other. So um, you'll know that the top is the correct one because it has a lot wider than the bottom from the notch to the bottom. 
So we're going to fold at the first notches, fold that down. And I'm using cotton on this one so I can press it. That makes it a little bit easier. If you're using another material that you can't press, um, I can tell you it is a little bit more challenging because I did use some waterproof canvas on one of the other ones I made. Um, but you can definitely make it work. I'm going to put some clips there because it helps me remember when I go to the sewing machine that that is the one that I'm going to top stitch. So you're not going to fold at the next line, which is um, line D. Line D is where we're going to fold um, line C up to and we're going to top stitch line C. So you want to kind of pinch it and pull it up to that those notches above and so i'm going to press that once you got it straight you can add some pressing which helps keep it in place and then i'll put a few clips there to remind me that that is where i'm going to top stitch across okay so again we're going to pinch at these notches and we're gonna fold them up to that line B. Okay, add a little bit of pressing. And then I will put some clips there to hold that in place. All right. So I have that one ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to this next one. Okay, so I have both of my credit card pockets ready. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do those top stitchings along line E, line C, and line A. So I'm gonna top stitch those. And remember, you're only top stitching those lines. We're not top stitching all the way through all of the layers or that will, um, close our pockets. So we want to lift it away from everything else and just top stitch along each individual row, not through all of them. So after I top stitch all those, what we're going to do is top stitch along the sides or just base stitch, I guess you could call it, just to hold these together so they don't flop all over. After we get all of the lines top stitched, and the sides basted closed. We're gonna fold these together and using our seam allowance indicated in the pattern, we're going to sew these two together and trim down the seam allowance. So we just have, you know, maybe an, an eighth or a quarter of an inch, and then we'll fold them open. We're gonna find the halfway point and top stitch along um, the middle to make each individual pocket. Okay, so that is what we're going to work on sewing next. So here is how the credit card pockets look so far. Um, what I need to do is trim down that seam allowance on the back. It'll just reduce some of that bulk. So I'm going to cut that. And I'm going to do a little press to make sure this is nice and flat. And then I'm going to mark the center area for sewing down that middle uh, to divide the pockets. So you could measure and find the center line if you would like. I'm gonna keep it a little more simple and just fold over. 
and mark each side and draw a line down. Okay, so I didn't grab one of my rulers that's long enough, so I'm going to line up the top here, mark it down, and move it. Okay, so that is where I'm going to draw my stitches down the center. I'm also going to go ahead and prep the credit card lining um, because what we're going to do here is we're going to want to crease this so that we know where we are lining up the credit card pocket. And the, where we are folding it is right at those notches. And then this is where we're going to sew our um, credit card pockets in place. So we're going to line the center line up at those notches. And then we're going to sew a base stitch along each side to hold it in place. And then the pattern gives dimensions for measuring from the center line over and stitching some lines to help keep the credit cards in place so they don't move around. So we are going to first sew separately away from this, that center line down the side, line it up in the middle, base stitch, base stitch, then measure from the center, sew some lines, and then sew down the middle. And then we'll have our um, credit card lining and credit card pockets prepped. So we have that pocket panel or the um, credit card pockets panel all finished. So um, I used a uh, marking tool that disappears using heat. So I'm just going to heat and make sure all those markings are gone. And I'm going to set this to the side because now we are going to prep our zipper. And to do that, I folded my zipper tab in half and brought the ends into the middle and then folded it around the end of the zipper. And then using the measurements in the pattern, I measured and marked the zipper tape where indicated. Because after we prep the zipper, we are going to lay our main panel that has the magnetic tab um, with the um, outer part facing up and we are going to attach the zipper after we've attached the tab and trimmed it up we are going to center the zipper with the ends folded out and stitch across it then we're going to be using our h um, coin pockets and after we've basted the zipper in place, we are going to lay one of the pockets um, right side facing in, and we're going to stitch that in place using our seam allowances. So we're on to prepping the zipper and the zipper pocket.
Okay, so as you can see, I first basted the zipper in place and I did place my zipper closed to the left. And then after I basted that in place, I sewed my zipper pocket lining um, right side facing down toward the wrong side of the zipper. So now that we have this in place, we can trim off the excess zipper here. And then what we can do is press our zipper, um, well, our main portion of the bag down and we can top stitch across there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do that top stitch. All right, so I top stitched along the main pocket and as you can see, it goes through to the pocket lining. Now we are going to attach the other side of the zipper to our um, credit card pockets. So we're gonna lay that face up and then we are going to lay the right side of our main pocket down. And then we are going to um, do a base stitch across here. And then same as before, after we base the zipper in place, we are gonna lay our um, coin pocket lining right side down along the zipper and we're gonna sew according to our seam allowances across there. Now, you may find, even if you have a zipper foot, that your zipper can get in the way, so just lower your needle, raise your presser foot, and move the zipper out of the way when you start to get a little close to it. That will be a little way to help you manage around the zipper. So we have that other side of the zipper in place on our credit card pockets. So again, we're gonna trim off any excess zipper you may have. And then we are going to press this open again. So press the pocket, coin pocket down and the, um, the credit card slots down and iron that. And then we're going to put some top stitching across here and then we'll start assembling the whole clutch together. All right, so I did my top stitching across the pocket panel and so now we're going to start assembling the clutch. So we're going to be folding together where our coin pockets meet and where the main body of the the clutch meets. So as you remember, you had the curved portion on this side and the curved portion here. You'll want those notches to meet and put some clips there. And you'll want your pocket panels, your coin pocket panels to meet. Now, one thing you're gonna wanna remember is to open up your zipper because you're going to later be flipping through your pocket here. Now, um, in the instructions, you're gonna first stitch from your notches around, um, down the sides, sorry, not across the bottom here, down the sides and leave the bottom open and the top open so that you can flip the clutch through and see if everything's lined up. After you see everything's lined up, you're gonna flip it back around again and this time tuck in your flap and close the curved portion and then flip it back through through the pocket. I'm going to skip um, stitching just the sides and then flipping it, checking it, flipping it back through and then putting the 
the flap in, I'm just going to sew it all at once um, just to make it a little bit easier for me. Um, and one thing I also like to do is I like to go ahead and press the, um, the pocket open now just makes it easier for me to sew later. So I'm going to press up the coin pocket. And sometimes I actually put some double-sided tape through here just to make that a little bit easier as well. I'm going to spray it just to try to get that press open nice and then do the other side. So what I'm going to do is line this all up and and um, and put some clips in and sew around it and then we'll meet back up for flipping in the final touches. Okay, so I've stitched around the outside of the clutch leaving the pocket open and you can see I left the zipper open so I'm going to turn this out and it is always a challenge doing that I think birthing these bags is often the scariest part because you have to see if everything lines up you don't want to pull too hard and and burst seams or anything so get this turned and then we're gonna leave the pocket open for now the lining pocket of the coin because we want to um use that area to put in the rest of our snaps. So we're going to measure and we're going to be putting the magnetic snap that we haven't used yet, one here and here to keep the credit card pocket closed. And then the other side of the clasp here is going to go on the outside of the pocket. So we're going to do those measurements next after we finish pressing all of this out. If you would like, you can put some top stitching around the pocket here. I'm probably just going to press it really well because it's really hard to get just top stitching around this portion. Um, but it, it does look really nice if you put in the effort to get that top stitching around that curve. So I'm gonna keep pressing all of this out, make sure it's nice and even, and then we will put in the rest of the magnetic snaps. Okay, so we are ready to attach the pieces to our magnetic snap. So I'm going to be putting one snap about a half of an inch down from the middle of the wallet. So we could do this a couple ways. We can line it up with that center line here, but if it isn't quite in the center of the wallet for whatever reason, um, that may not work. So I'm actually gonna line it up with the, the magnetic snap at the top here and then do a half an inch down um, because I think that will visually be more pleasing than trying to line it up with this and it being kind of off center, if that makes sense. But do it however you feel comfortable. Um, so a half an inch down from the top here, I put that mark and then I am going to mark where I'm going to cut my slits at. Okay, so I have that all marked. Now, the tricky part is, is that we're going to need to reach inside and make sure we are only cutting through. Where we only want to cut through just the fabric here. So I'm going to do little slits. Now you could flip this around. And I will do that before I close everything up. I'm going to flip this back around and I'm going to put a little bit of interfacing and everything on the other side, but I'm just going to attach these right now. So then we want to get inside and put the washer on and I'm going to close everything up 
But like I said, you may want to put some interfacing on there to um, make sure that these um, this hardware doesn't scrape up your fabric on the inside. So I'm going to fold the prongs down and then we have one of these attached. So like I said, later I'm going to reach in there and iron on some interfacing or glue some fabric on behind that just to make sure the hardware doesn't scrape up through the fabric. But for right now, that should work. All right, so we got one attached. Now what we're going to do, or how I'm going to do it, is I'm going to fold this closed. Fold it how I think it would, how it would naturally want to close. And I'm going to mark where that falls. So the center looks like it's going to fall about right there. So that is where the next snap is going to go so right about here and that one is going to have the male end over here so i'm going to line up the washer and mark where my slits are going to go this one is going to be a little bit easier because it's right at the end Now you don't want to go through the pocket lining. So if you have that pushed in, pull that out a little bit. And then we're going to just cut a little bit along here. And like I said, when we did the first one, if you have some fray check or something like that, that you would like to add on, go ahead and do that here as well. I don't think I cut one that one enough. I get so where I don't want to go too far, so sometimes I just don't cut quite far enough through. Okay, so see this one's so much easier because you're right at the edge and it'll be easier to put some interfacing over that too. All right, so open those up. And so I'm gonna push the lining back in of the coin pocket because I want to make sure everything lays really nice when I do the final magnetic closure. So that closes nicely. And then this top is going to fold down. Now, what I did when I made my first um, clutch, because I, I made a few of these just to make sure I understood the pattern, felt comfortable with it. Um, what I did when I did the first one is I really forced it closed. You don't want to do that because you're going to be putting things inside here. So you want it to close really naturally and don't try to force it down farther than it wants to go. So just close it kind of gentle. Make sure you like the way it's laying, that it looks even. And this is darker fabric, so I can't use the, the my green marker. I have a chalk. And then you're just going to kind of tilt this up and see where it lays. So it's laying right in the middle of that strawberry. How cute is that? Okay, so I double checked it. So that is where my closure is going to go. And it's the female end, the last one I have. So I did everything right. Oh, wouldn't that be bad if I put the wrong one in the wrong place? My chalk's not wanting to mark through here very well. Okay, yeah, I got it. So again... I'm going to pull that lining out because I don't want to, I don't want to cut through the lining of the coin pocket and I'm going to cut those slits here. Just try not to go too far. And put that closure through. The washer. Okay, and then the last thing we need to do is close up our zipper pocket. But before I do that, I'm going to put a little bit of um, interfacing behind all of these um, closures. And then we'll take a look at this all finished after we zip, after we zip, after we sew this closed.
Okay, so let's first take a look at the wallet that you saw me making in the tutorial portion of the video. So um, I did not show at the end making the, um, you know, like the handle clutch, <laughs> the, um, the strap that I attached to the zipper because it's not really how it is done in the pattern. I didn't have any rose gold hardware on hand to use, so I attached it to the zipper pull itself. My zipper pull is big enough to do that. Um, otherwise, you may want to use like an O-ring, um, one that is split to open and put on the zipper or use, um, you know, like a clamp here, a strap clamp, something like that to do it typically. Um, but this worked for me. It's my own wallet. So let's take a look at it. First of all, it is very, very handy because there's so much space inside such a, a small wallet. And let me tell you the dimensions on it. It's finished at 7.75 inches by 4.75 inches. Um, so when you open up the front, you have that magnetic snap there. And then right away, it opens to where you would slide your phone if you wanted to, and it fits perfectly inside that slot. I really like this because you don't have to worry about opening up the full wallet and losing anything. You can just open it, part of it stays closed, you have the zipper area and you can grab your phone if you're just wanting to carry a light amount of stuff. So you have that. And then when you open it up farther, you have all of your um, credit card slots, which there should be plenty for everyone, <laughs> maybe not. But then you also have these handy, um, you know, little slots that you could put cash, your checkbook if you carry that need to carry that with you and there's one on each side and it's a perfect space for cash or like I said a checkbook or anything else wider that you may need to put in there it's plenty of um, space for credit cards like I said and um, then you still have the coin pocket zipper pocket anything that you really don't want to have to worry about falling out so there's so much space in such a um, little clutch so I had so much fun making it the pattern itself is so easy to follow it is really well written um, you're not gonna have very many questions on what you do because there is a ton of photos throughout to walk you through everything a lot of fun to make so one thing I do want to point out and it is not an issue with the pattern instructions whatsoever it does indicate in a lot of places in the pattern to make sure to check that you printed it at 100% so this is a wallet that I made first and it is so cute I'm very very cute I love the rainbow aside from that um, it you can see it is not quite the right size so credit cards don't fit in or anything what happened was we had just got a new printer I had my old printer set up to always print at a hundred percent because I do a lot of patterns I forgot to check when I printed and this was not printed at a hundred percent it was printed at 92 percent and I had the biggest struggle figuring out why the credit cards were not fitting in and then it clicked to me that when I, we got the new printer, I did not check to make sure it was at 100%. And alas, it was not. <laughs> so that is something that I really want you to make sure that you pay attention to. Now, one thing you may notice on here is this detail I put down the front flap of the wallet. One thing I loved that was included in the pattern was as well was ideas um for changing up this front flap and kind of making it your own and they also included some different flap options that are different shapes that you could choose to do so i thought that was really amazing in the pattern because you may make one of these and then really had fun a lot of fun with it but then you could kind of switch it up still feel very comfortable making the next one because you know all the steps you've already done it once but change it up by adding little details or changing the shape of the flap so it feels like you have a completely different wallet pattern so there's another that's the one that i made and then i also made 
This one, um, kind of going along the same lines of having a different detail on it, but having it the right size. <laughs> I can't, I still can't believe I did that because it's such a cute wallet. Um, as you can see, I did a more versatile, um, you know, handbag strap to be able to remove um, since I had hardware that matched. And I did make this wallet with cork fabric and some marine vinyl that I had. And then on the inside, I used um, some waterproof canvas. Now doing it this way made it very, like a lot more noticeably thick than doing it all in um, cotton fabrics. And you can see here, I did mention it during the tutorial that you don't want to pull down the flap too far because like you can see here it bends this um, I'm not sure I haven't tried to see if my phone will still fit in since I pulled it down so far so it kind of makes it harder to close doing it that way but it is I am able to still close it with my phone inside um, one of the reasons that I did that was because when I was folding it closed, I really wanted this um, detail that I put on to be more in the front. But really, if I had thought about it, I should have loosened it up a little bit, let that go a little more onto the top so it lays a little more flat on the side. So just a few things that you should pay attention to if you make this wallet. Like I said, these are all things to look at that aren't any issues with the pattern as written follow it along completely but just things that I noticed that I was not fully thinking about when I was doing some of the finishing details but I think you will have a lot of fun making this wallet just make sure you print at a hundred percent if you aren't using an industrial sewing machine I would probably stay away from using a lot of heavier fab fabrics like the marine vinyl because you do get a lot of bulk at the sides here from all the layers of the um, credit card slots. So I think you may be able to get through them all if you really go slow, increase your stretch, stitch length, if you're able to raise your presser foot, things like that. But the, um, the all cotton was a lot easier to work with. There wasn't, there was still bulk at the sides, but my machine could sew through it fine. I did this one mostly on my Bernina. I did do some of the detail stitching on my industrial just because I can get longer stitch length on there and I like the way it looks on the outside. Um, but this one I did all on my industrial so I can't speak to for sure if you could do it on just a standard domestic sewing machine. Um, like I said there is a lot of bulk through here so if you really wanted to use some vinyl I'd probably only use it on the outside and do a cotton as, as lining just to make sure um, that it's easy enough to sew through. So if you have any questions about the flip flip clutch wallet that's like a tongue twister for me I don't know why um, please let me know in the comments. I can try and answer any questions you may have. I had a ton of fun sewing this. I'm definitely going to go look for some more sewing patterns from Spencer's Etsy shop because they are really well written. I had a lot of fun. Um, if there's one that you've been looking at that you would like me to try to do a walkthrough on, let me know in the comments as well or if you have your favorite that you think I should look at. I'd love to hear from you. Again, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope that it helped you out if you're looking at this pattern or looking for a wallet to sew. Um, I think it's a great, great, great um, pattern. I had a lot of fun. I like that you can carry so much in it and it's perfect. Look at what I matched it with. This is a little sneak of a, a video I have coming up of a, of a purse. Just to slide in there and if you have a lot that you're gonna need to go shop for, need a big bag to carry along, have a match, and then pull out your necessities if you're just going on a quick, quick shopping trip or errands to run. So again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I really appreciate you all coming here and watch. If you have not subscribed, I'd love for you to subscribe. I have a video coming up on this purse, a tutorial walkthrough. So if you want to see that, be sure to hit the subscri subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and be sure to give this video a like if it was helpful to you. So I'll see you next time, you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.